Hello there, Jackie Holland here, and praying you're having a beautiful day, a wonderful day. I've got a word for you today. It's a word that is really right from God. It's right from heaven, and I can assure you that because it's written down in the word that said in John 14. So you want to hear it? God's got, God's got our number. He, he wants to give us a word. Some of you need encouragement. You need... You're like, I, I've got, I don't even know what to do next. You need encouragement. I've got it for you. Can you just be still and trust me for just a little bit? Now let me read this to you and, and let's talk about it for just a little bit. Let's see what the Lord wants to show us. Because I think he does have something. In John 14, it says, Do not let your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Jesus said, In my Father's house are many mansions. He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. He said, I'm going away to prepare a place for you. And where I go, I'll come again. And I'll receive you to myself that where I am, you'll be also. Well, music. Music is starting. Interesting. <laughs> and, and Thomas, one of the disciples said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and we do not know the way. Jesus said, I am the way, Thomas. I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. If you want to get to the Father, you go through me. If you really know me, you will know the Father. From now on, you do know him, and you have seen him. Now that explains a lot. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. And some people would have an issue with that, but that's just the way it is. Jesus said, and from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Their eyes were being opened. God wants to open our eyes, open our hearts to receive. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father that we, we will be... We will be enough for us, and He will be enough for us. <laughs> That's all. We just we just, we want you, we want you to show us, and then we'll be satisfied. We're never satisfied. <laughs> we really never are satisfied. Jesus said, "Don't you know me, Philip? Even after I've been among you for such a long time, anyone has seen me has seen the Father. And how can you say, show us the Father?" Don't you believe that I am in the Father? And the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak of my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me. It is Him doing the work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or at least believe me for the miracles that you've, the works that have, He's done. Very truly, I tell you, whosoever believes in me will do the works that I am doing. Now that's that's a big deal, isn't it? Whoever believes in Jesus can do the works that Jesus did. And they will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father and I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Father will be glorified through the Son. That's the whole thing. God will not share His glory with others and he wants us he wants the glory and the honor he deserves it and he wants us to glorify God with our lives with our very being he said from now on if you ask me anything in my name I'll do it if you love me he said keep my commandments and I will ask the father and he'll give you another advocate to help you and to be with you forever the spirit of truth, the word cannot accept him. The world can't accept. The world can't accept about Jesus. They, they just—it's too simple. It's too—it's too simple. I cannot say it's complicated. It takes faith, even childlike faith, to truly believe in creation, in God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It—it it takes faith. It's a gift from God. But Jesus said, I'm not going to leave you as orphans. Some of you have orphan spirits. 
You may even have been an orphan. You may have been passed around when you were young and go to this place or that place. And it was hard. And it affected you. But some people have had a great home, but they have like an orphan spirit. They never felt received. Now, maybe it's not the parents' fault, and maybe they were reached, trying to love on the children all the time, but the children, they just, you know, it's a spirit. We're not fighting flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, things present, things to come. Satan is a liar. He's the prince and power of his air, and he wants to deceive and bring confusion, and he wants you to feel like an orphan, but Jesus said you will not be an orphan. There are no orphans in heaven because the Father has received you, and he loves you. And he cares for you. He said, on that day, you will realize that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and I am in you. Whosoever, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one that loves me. That's how the Lord would know. If you keep, if you keep my word, I know you love me. But he said, the one who keep, loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will also love him and show himself to them. God wants to reveal himself to us. But we... We cannot go by our, what we see with our eyes or hear with our ears or our emotions or past thinking or everything. We've got to ask the Lord, open up my heart, the eyes, the windows of my heart, <laughs> and let me see. Let me see, Lord. What are you saying here? He says, anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. And anyone who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father that sent me. All this have I spoken while I'm still with you. And the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. See, a lot of people, they're wanting to know truth, so they're, they're getting all these books or going to all of these uh, classes, different things, and other religions and everything they're trying to open up their mind and heart and be open which is nothing wrong with wanting to know the truth that's a a truth seeker is a is, is an amazing person but jesus already said here i am the way so he's saying seek me while you can find me call upon me while i am near <laughs> he said peace i leave with you my peace i give you i, I do not give to you as the world gives do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid if you've lost a loved one a friend something special in your life even even a pet sometimes i mean you let's face it people love their pets and it's hard it's hard to give them up but if you've lost a loved one or friend it's hard you, you miss them terribly but if they're a believer, the Lord says, don't let your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because see, he's preparing that beautiful place for us. He said, I I've told you before it happens so that when it does happen, you will believe it. I will not say much more to you for the prince of this world, that's the devil himself. In, in the prince in the power of the air, that's the devil, Satan. A lot of people are worshiping the devil. They don't say I'm worshiping the devil, but you can tell by the way they, they're serving the devil. You're going to serve God, the Creator God, Jehovah, Jireh, our provider. You're going to serve the devil, the prince of the power of the air. And he said, I, I'm not going to say much more to you because the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so the world may learn that I love the Father, and I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. And he said, come now and let us leave. You know, Jesus, he, he, he just don't want you to be suffering by hurting, feeling broken, alone, deserted, isolated, like an orphan. Today I put on this shirt, and it says, true religion, it's really just a brand a brand of jeans and t-shirts and various things. I just like it because it's got letters all over it. So it says, says true religion jeans. <laughs> but really, I was thinking about it. And it says, pure religion and undefiled is this, to visit the fatherless 
and the widows in their affliction. That's pure religion. This is true religion, but that's pure and true. Pure religion, undefiled. In other words, it's not tainted. It, it, it's the heart of God is to visit the fatherless and the widows and their affliction and this, to keep your own self unspotted from the world. See, if you're corrupted by the things of the world, if you love the world and the things of the world, then it's hard because the love of the Father is not in you. You can be corrupted. You can be, you can absolutely be tainted, almost like a bacterial except it's in, your, in the heart, in the mind, in your actions. You, you, you're, you cannot be an effective soul winner or witness if you've got one foot in the world and one in the church. And a lot of people think that the church attending a church service, give, even giving to the, to the church, or maybe even participating, doing activities and such things, is gonna get them their place in heaven. May I just share with you, don't waste your time if that's what you're thinking. If you think that's what's going to get you in heaven by going to a building and people seeing that you're, you know, religious, that's not going to get you to heaven. The Lord said you've got to be born again. There was a religious man, he was, but he wasn't just religious, he was a believer. And he said... He wanted, he wanted to believe Jesus. He wanted to believe his teachings. His name was Nicodemus. He said, what must I do to be saved? I mean, like, because of his teachings. And Jesus said, you must be born again. How can you be born again? God wants to give you a new heart, a new mind, a new way of thinking, a new, new way. Take out the old stony heart and put in a heart of flesh. He loves you. He said, I have loved you before you were even born. I've got a plan for you, and it's better than anything you can imagine. You think that there's something out here for you, and you're looking for that, the end of that rainbow? <laughs> no. I am the rainbow. I am that I am, the Lord says. I am that I am. And he said, nobody can come to me except the, the Father draws, the Holy Spirit draws them. You can't come to Jesus even just intellectually and saying, you know, uh, I, think I'll, um, I think I'll become a Christian today. Well, that's a great thought, but if you don't, Repent of your sins truly and factually and mean it and ask the Lord, Lord, I, I want to give my heart to you. God knows our heart. He can read our mind. That's what I'm saying. If you're only going to church or you're only doing activities and you think that's going to get you into heaven, then you're wasting your own time. Mm -mm. No, you must be born again. You need to have a regenerated heart. You need your heart changed. Well, I can't change your heart. Even a doctor, he could put in a new heart. But you know what? The heart, out of the heart comes all kinds of emotions. You know? It's your, out of your soul. Your mind, will, your emotions. And, and, and all kinds of evil things can come out of the heart. But it's very possible, thinking of that, I'm thinking, well, if, what if you did have a, a, a transplant heart? And what if that did come from an evil person? God knows your heart. And he can save a heart, a heart that is repentant and truly reaching out. So today, I would say true religion is... To visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction. To keep yourself unspotted from the world. But just doing good things is not going to cut it. It's right to go to church. It's right to give. It's right to do wonderful, wonderful works. And that is a, a great sign that you, you, know, you really are a believer. And 
but don't you know that the world is full of unrighteous, ungodly people that do great works. They give lots of money. They spend time. They, I mean, they, they make great sacrifices, even to death their own self, because they, you know, that's in. They want to do that, but salvation doesn't come from beating yourself up or or getting uh, in, thrust into uh, a situation where you're forced to accept Jesus. It's like these guys, these, these, these disciples. There's like, well, just show us. And he's like, I've been with you all this time. <laughs> give, basically, I, he's probably thinking, give me a break. I've been with you all this time, and you're asking me still, show me the Father? He said, okay, I'm going to say this. I'll probably say it again, but I'm going to say it right now. And, and from now on, you're going to know this because I'm, I'm saying And it's going to be revealed to you. You're going to really realize it. But I'm just saying to you, if you've seen me, Jesus said, you've seen the Father because we're one. And he, ta he had told them, believe, if nothing else, but believe because of the works that I do, have done. And they saw a witness. But the devil is a deceiver, a thief, copycat. And people try to, to copy what Jesus is doing. And I'm just telling you this. Your life is not your own. You've been bought and paid for with the price of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything is, it's a done deal. You don't have to worry. He said, let not your heart be troubled. So if you've lost someone that you love, and you're 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 just like, well, I mean, they're gone. You yes, you miss them. You you miss them terribly, but you can't bring them back. But you can do what David did, after his little child died. He said, you know what? I can't bring him back, but I can go be with him. You can too, and so can I when we believe, when we have true religion, pure religion, undefiled religion, when we have a heart that pants after the Lord, like a deer pants for the water brook. He said, so my soul longs after you, O Lord. He said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise will continually be in my mouth. My soul will make my boast in the Lord. I will give myself to you, O oh Lord, because I believe that you are God. I want true religion. I don't want a religious spirit. Religious spirited people killed Jesus because of their jealousy. But true religion serves and loves and gives and there's no boundaries and what does God give you back eternal life with him he said I've gone to prepare a mansion he said oh, I love this I love this so much eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither is even entered into the heart of man the things that God has prepared for those who love him. But he said he will reveal it to his saints. So God is revealing. He's revealing truth to you and to me. So I'm just saying, if you're not quite sure you got it together and you don't know, you think, well, maybe I just, you know, I grew up in church or I started going. It's a great way to meet people and, you know, fellowship and things like that. And then... Some of you, you've seen your, your leaders fall and you start wondering if anybody's for real. Well, yes, they sure are. Of course they are. And it's like anything else in life. People are human beings. Quit putting them on a pedestal like that they are, are, are gods. They're not. They are, well, I don't have to worry about anybody putting me on a pedestal. They never have. And I'm not expecting that they ever will. I, I, I wouldn't want it anyway. Everybody knows that, I mean, I'm, I, look, I'm just an ordinary woman who has a changed life. The Lord, it reminds me of an old song, heaven came down 
and glory fill my soul. Well, what does that mean? It means this. When I had an encounter with Jesus, my heart was changed. When I came to the point, even at a young age, 12 years old, and I heard the message of Jesus, the salvation gospel message, the simple, pure, religious religion message, I said, I want to be saved. And I asked Jesus in my heart, did I fail after that? <laughs> Countless times. Have I repented? Countless times. <laughs> Does he love me? Oh, yes. More than we can imagine. More than we can even imagine or think about. God loves us. How much does he love us anyway? Well, it says he loved us so much that he sent his only begotten son into the world that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He didn't come to the world. Jesus didn't come into the world to, to point out everybody's frailties and weakness and sins. He came to seek and to save the lost. He didn't come to condemn. He wants them to be saved. The Lord is not willing that any would perish, but that all would come to repentance. That's what I'm saying. It all has to do with repentance. You first acknowledge that you're a sinner and you cannot save yourself. That's what the Bible says. For all have sinned and all have come short of the glory of God. And it says, you know, come unto me, all you that are weary. Well, you may be weary today. You're just worn out. God wants to put rest into your heart and your soul and your spirit. He wants you to look up. Your redemption draws near. And that loved one or that thing that you've lost, it, you know, you have to trust God because life is fragile. They, there's a quote, life is fragile, handle with care. <laughs> and so you've got to know that the Lord cares. He cares. Does he care? Oh, yes, he cares. He cares for you. And he cares for me. He cares for that child that's out in the God knows where. It's messed up. He cares for that husband that's you know is messing up, or that wife you know that's that's unhappy and and, and and ready to pack up and go on down the road. God cares about what you care about. But even as much as he cares about, some people say, oh, he doesn't care about those little things. Yes, he does. You know why I know he cares? Because it says, even if a little sparrow falls to the ground, he knows and he cares. And he provides food, seed to the sower. <laughs> and he will bless you and prosper you along the way. Oh, yes, you're going to have some times that are not so easy. But God will help you through them. You're going to make it. You're going to make it. And if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior to forgive you of your sins and save your soul, he tosses those sins, all those sins, I don't care what they were, into a sea of forgetfulness, never to remember them again. There are consequences to our actions, and sometimes people actually become Christians, and then they, they, they it's pending a prison, or maybe they get saved in prison. They still have to wait out their time. I've, I've done a lot of jail and prison ministry. That's what I, I love doing. But I, and I've heard many stories. But I've heard a lot of guys and women say, this, as bad as this is, this is the best thing that ever happened to me. There's others, I mean, you know, they may be angry or whatever. They're not ready. God's not through with them. And God is just really, he's just wanting to give us opportunities to say yes to him. Will you say yes to the Lord? Today, if you hear his voice, will you not harden your heart? Will you say yes? You can. You can pray. It's not a magic prayer. It's a simple prayer. I would say something like this. Dear Heavenly Father, 
remember our Father who already came. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. See, that's his son. That's Jesus who died on the cross that I was just reading about. And he was just teaching. He said, if you've seen me in the flesh, you've seen the Father. Because we're one. I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name down in the book of life. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Guide me and please, Lord, put me around the right people. Help me to say yes when I need to say yes and no when I need to say no. Let me be strong and courageous and unafraid. I give you my life. Fill me now with your spirit. You said the comforter that you sent, that you sent to all believers, all who believe, is not you're not by, you're not by yourself. You're not by yourself. You by, you feel alone. You're not but you're not alone. The comforter lives inside you when you become a believer, when you become a Christian, a true Christian, a Christ follower. You say, well, does that mean I've got to be perfect? Did I say that? He's perfect. You just say, here's my life, Lord. Help me to change the things I can. Give, You know that little serenity prayer? I just think that's just the neatest prayer. The courage to change the things that I can, the wisdom to know the difference. Lord, I, there's things that I can't change, and I, I want to change, but I can't. And I, he, he has the power to change everything and change it now. Why not believe for that? If you accept Jesus, let me know. You might go to the... I, I love it if you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. I don't have a lot of people. I don't know much about putting all that stuff in there, but I know that God's kept me alive to share the good news, the gospel. Jackie Holland at Jackie Holland 444. There's a little space there. You could say, you know, I prayed that prayer. I want to get right with God. I love that so much. You tell others, tell your friends, don't be ashamed. And remember, he said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Remember, true religion, pure religion, is to visit the fatherless and the widows in their affliction and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. So rather than to try to clean up everybody else's acts, try to tell them how to live, the Lord says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I can promise you this. If you give your heart to God, he, you will never, never lose, lose out. You will always, <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be happy. He said, you mean I don't have any troubles? No, I didn't say you wouldn't have any troubles. I just said, You'll be so happy because you'll know. If you drop dead that minute, you're with the Lord. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. He'll figure all that out. God is able. He said, whatever has been done, is already done. Your sins are bought and paid for. All you have to do is receive like a gift. Open up the package. Yes, I want that gift. That free gift is it's by grace. And it's through faith, which is unmerited favor the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen I believe it and I receive it in Jesus name I want to hear from you pardon any static that you hear in the background it's like the, I've got one of those uh, videos on with music but it's really just I think I think I'm hearing uh, ocean waves well that's soothing if you're there but not necessarily right here but we ignore that because the message is stronger than the waves. The message is stronger than your problem. The message is stronger than your sin. God loves us, and I want to. I want to be with you forever, ever, never, in heaven. And we'll do that by trusting in Jesus. I'll talk to you later. God bless you.